Hello, it's time to have a look at what's happened this weekend and of course there is at least five important relevant things that we need to discuss so let's get into it starting with Real Madrid So Santi Solari has certainly done enough to stay at Real Madrid, isn't he? Well, the fact is quite clearly Real Madrid having failed at uh, bringing Conte to the club for different reasons. Uh, he was the chosen one, perhaps wrongly, because as Lopetegui, in the case of Lopetegui, he comes with a style, with a way of playing that doesn't, I don't think, uh, kind of fits with this Real Madrid. But anyway, they tried it. Conte was uh, put in his conditions. Uh, we were leaked that uh, it was going to happen. And then Sergio Ramos said after the Clásico that um, basically it was a message from the changing room that Conte was not the man, that uh, respect is something you earn, you don't impose. He was certainly was saying that uh, that kind of coach doesn't really suit uh, Real Madrid, that the one that has been succeeding is one that allows players to play because remember, this Real Madrid, like every Real Madrid in recent history, is made out of the best of every house. And uh, when a coach comes in with a clear idea of how things have to be done, you take away some of the things that have made them successful. Lopetegui wanted to impose a style based on the Johan Cruyff School of Football. I said it before, uh, in a, a, way of, um, a way of defending, a way of attacking, building from the back, positioning was important, all those things that uh, made Real Madrid lose a little bit of their improvisation and freedom that had made them so good. Well, Solari is certainly the kind of manager that allows them to play with freedom. Yes, they have obligations, of course, but he's managed to get uh, two gears more in the uh, ability to have uh, to put work without the ball. And with the ball, there is a freedom that they all seem to be enjoying. You can see it in the way Benzema is playing, but you can see it also in some of the decisions that he's making. For instance, even though Vinicius didn't play at the weekend, you saw a Vinicius that feels important, he feels more relevant anyway than the, the time under Lopetegui. Uh, he comes on for 10-15 minutes at the end, and what he's asked to do, of course, is to um, bring electricity to the game, to go 1v1, but not to forget his obligations when he tracks back. All in all, uh, he's starting to release that energy that he's got inside. And when he has uh, been uh, in the game, he has affected the team. He has con become contagious to others. So uh, you've got uh, Vinicius playing, and that's what the board of Real Madrid wants. Uh, Solari has taken this decision based on football reasons, but certainly he realizes that um, Vinicius can be important to the team when um, uh, when something is needed, when something different, when improvisation yet again is needed. Now, can he grow Vinicius into become a very important, very, very relevant part of Real Madrid this season? I don't think so. I think um, this season he will appear and disappear, but his value will grow, I believe, from where it starts. I know that um, he's been quoted for 65 million euros. Cost is about 45 million. The rest seems to be commissions. Uh, but he will score one or two goals this season that will make people realize that in Vinicius there is not only a, a player that, um, that, that has got moments of brilliance, but somebody that can be efficient. I believe that's going to be his role this season and then he will grow from it. Interestingly enough, Rodrigo, the other uh, Brazilian that Madrid has signed and that quietly will come to Real Madrid, uh, not, uh, not in January, perhaps in the summer. It's more of a player, actually. Uh, he's more of a mature player in the way he takes his decisions, in the way he calmly uh, plays the ball and how he uh, it feels like um, pressure doesn't really affect him. He likes to uh, ask for the ball and he delivers it with uh, accuracy and intelligence. So I believe in the long term, Rodrigo will be a bigger acquisition than Vinicius, but of course, it's still too early to say. In any case, there will be a role to be played by Vinicius, and you'll see more than um, you would have if Lopetegui had stayed. And with Solar in charge, what you've got is uh, all the things that uh, you learn via the decision that he has taken. For instance, Asensio has been on the bench in two consecutive games, Isco in three consecutive games. If you're not in good form, 
you don't play. He is, though, patient with Bale. He's demanding more of him, and Bale has to give more back. Yes, he scored again the Victoria Pilsen, but he needs to uh, be more relevant in, in, in the game. Uh, he will be given the opportunity because, as we know, he's uh, perhaps the last Galactico signed by Real Madrid that is still at the club. And uh, with Benzema growing the way he is, now it's just time for many, Isco, Asensio as well, but also Bale, to prove uh, their worth for a team that in the past has taken advantage of his goal-scoring abilities, his shooting abilities, and his ability to open up defences, Real Madrid and uh, Asensio, uh, and uh, Solari saying that needs more of Bale. What extraordinary game took place at the Camp Nou. Betis building from the back, even though at the beginning they made mistakes. Pau, the goalkeeper, insisted and the players insisted that was the way. And of course, what happened was uh, with a line of pressure of Barcelona, the first one with Messi, Luis Suarez and Malcolm not really working, you beat that and then it was easier to attack Barcelona because there was so much space in behind the defence. Uh, in the second goal of, uh, of Betis, you could see that even up to six players of Betis were attacking for only four players of Barcelona defending. So you've got um, uh, basically a Betis that has applied the Barcelona medicine to Barcelona and made a lot of damage. Uh, is the first victory of Betis at the Camp Nou since 98. So you can see how big and how historical this result was. Out of all the players in that team, for me, men of the match, as I said on Twitter, were Pau, the goalkeeper, because uh, he made a very good save with 1-0 uh, to Betis at the time. It could have been 1-1, first half, still with a lot to play. Uh, well, it was 2-0 soon after that save, so that was important. But more important than that, perhaps, was the fact that he insisted on the idea of building from the back. He believed that that's... Well, he has made believe that if you want to play in this team, you have to play that way. And he kept doing it, even though, as I said at the beginning, there were a couple of mistakes that created doubts in the in the minds of the Betis players. He kept insisting with that style. And the other one, Lo Celso. Lo Celso has been magnificent in recent weeks. He was against Milan in the both encounters in the Europa League, but against Barcelona, he was superb in everything he did. Starting with, without the ball, he stopped Busquets. Uh, he was on top of him, uh, close to him, just about one meter, but uh, with enough closeness. So Busquets, when he was waiting for the ball to come to him in the usual build-up of Barcelona, uh, nobody trusted uh, with that possibility as Le Celso was man-marking him really closely and really well. Uh, so he didn't have to tackle a lot, he just had to be there. And from uh, being there, the build-up of Barcelona broke down really because they had to find other people to intervene. You stop Busquets and you stop Barcelona's fluidity. Another thing he did, of course, when Betis attacked without um, directness, it was more passing, he would play himself between the lines, between the defensive life and the midfield lines. That, if you play, uh, if you play uh, with intelligence, does a lot of damage because the, the, the centre-backs and the, and the full-backs don't know if they have to go for him or if it is the midfield that has to defend him. In that, in those pockets of spaces, Lethelso was brilliant as well, receiving the ball and well-positioned to actually uh, deliver passes to the forwards, especially uh, Loren, but also Joaquin. So Lethelso was superb. He, of course, belongs to PSG. He's on loan from PSG, and I think they should have him back or sell him to a bigger club even because he belongs to the next level. Lethelso, uh, it's good news for Messi, of course, as well, because he's becoming a regular with the national side of Argentina, and he is the kind of midfielder that Messi play, uh, likes to play with. A debate that I'm starting here with you, and I would like to hear from you about this, the U European Super League. We heard that uh, in different ways, from different companies, private companies, they've been trying to uh, put this in place, and the top clubs in Europe are, are listening. They certainly are listening. Relevant, the same company that uh, has got an agreement with La Liga to play a game in uh, Miami, 
which won't happen this season, I don't think. But in any case, it may happen at some point. And the deal is a 15-year deal. So yes, in that period, I'm sure that will take place. But Relevant also tried uh, to get together uh, with and did get together with some of the bigger names of European football CEOs that wanted to listen what the plan was. Relevant has moved aside and other companies are coming thinking we could do it this way. We could actually bring money that other way. And that is the biggest issue. Uh, nobody has actually said how uh, the money that those clubs may lose by disappearing from the domestic leagues and going into Europe, European Super League or still remaining in the domestic leagues, but of course uh, with a, perhaps a, 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 a B team which will take value off the domestic leagues, how that money can be replaced. Nobody's answered that. But uh, capitalism means that it will happen. Well, what I mean by that is that football is a mirror of society. And if you cannot see what's happening, it's because you're blind. From the creation to the Premier League, from the creation to the Champions League, the growth of the Champions League, the fact that the UEFA is trying, and even FIFA, to create club competitions to bring more money to those clubs that demand more and more and more means that it will happen. Now, my solution is, see what you think of this, to give them the opportunity to have a, a European Super League a fantastic big one. We'll see who plays in it. But imagine the biggest names possible. Barcelona, Madrid, Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs. Anyway, Bayern Munich, Juventus, Milan, Inter, all those. Give them that possibility with no limits. Forget financial fair play. Just put as much money as you want into it. It will be like an NBA style uh, kind of league. You'll have to have, I think, uh, relegation and some kind of promotion somehow. But let the rich have their own playground. But the domestic league should still be going and should still be going with them, with this, the, those same teams, but with a different rule. The rule of everybody can waste the same or use the same amount of money on wages and transfers. Everybody the same, equal, equal field the most strict financial fair play you could imagine. And then you could have another Leicester winning the league. And then the domestic competitions will have the competitiveness that, for instance, we're finding in La Liga this season. And that will be attractive. But of course, uh, they may fill those big names, B sides or not the strongest sides, which means that uh, those leagues will lose money. And to recover that money, you would expect the competitiveness will bring still uh, uh, sponsors. But also, I do feel that a lot of fans are getting away from the Premier League, from the glamour of La Liga, and uh, they're getting bored with uh, seeing the big names winning uh, most of the time. Uh, and they perhaps going to a different type of leagues, uh, grassroots or, um, or non-league football. Well, um, those that are getting away from football that way, the football that you've seen at the moment, you will recover them if you give them the opportunity to see the, those competitions being competitive again. Um, it's all very broad, but that would be my idea. I don't know, do you buy it? What do you think? Out of the Manchester derby, i like to point out to um, one player. Of course, Manchester City proved to, uh, to be superior to Manchester United. Nobody can argue with that. It doesn't matter how many um, uh, different themes or, or, uh, or explanations the likes of Jose Mourinho gives City as superior to Manchester United. The, the table doesn't lie. But um, it is, you have to look at the little detail to see why they're superior. And of course, it's not only the quality of the players, it's the development of the players. That, for me, is the biggest thing, what uh, Pep Guardiola has managed to do with his team. Bernardo Silva is the clear, uh, for me, is a clear case of that. Bernardo Silva, who of course only played, started 15 games last season, but by the time Kevin De Bruyne comes back from injury this season, he would have already started 15 games. In fact, he started all but one, I think, in the league. And, um, and meanwhile, uh, the 24-year-old is growing in the different posi positions that he's played. That versatility helps him because it's something that uh, Pep Guardiola admires, of course. He can play in the midfield, he can play right or left, he can play as a number 10. But it's the fact that he works so hard. I think I saw a stat early in the season, the first six games that he participated wrong more than anybody else. So he is given that to Pep Guardiola, and that's so absolutely crucial in the pressure high, of course, in, in the style of, of uh, Manchester City. But 
is his trickery, is his little gestures, technical gestures, is his decision making, is his passing as well, who's making so special that if he continues with his progression, I think at the end of the season we'll be talking of him as one of the top 10 players in the world. And if he continues with goals, and goals is what gives you what I'm going to say next, perhaps one of the top five in the world. If he actually scores 25 goals this season, we will be seeing uh, uh, Bernardo Silva being granted the play of the year for Manchester City for sure. But even more than that, he will be considered a top 10 or even a top five player. So keep an eye on him because I see progression in Bernardo Silva and I see that he's enjoying his football. Enjoying, knowing what he has to do, delivering it as well. All those things are actually crucial for players to maximize the potential. And we have not seen the best of Bernardo Silva yet. In this top five, we tend to talk about players that have impressed me when, uh, when I've seen them. And then once I uh, see a little bit of it, then I try to find out more about them and share it with you. Nicolas Pepe, for instance, of Lille, is one of those players that have started a great start of the season. Uh, it scored eight goals already, nine assists, and he's got a great ability with his uh, left foot. It's mostly left-footed, plays on the right-hand side, but also on the left-hand side. You can pull them as, an, as a 9-2 if necessary, but it's mostly from wide areas coming inside what makes him special. As I said, right-hand side, left-footed, but he can come in and shoot, but it's what he does with the ball in small spaces what makes him special, and he space. That's why Arsenal are looking into the possibility of signing him. Yes, they've approached Lille. Uh, he cost about 50 million euros when he came from Angiers, but right now he costs probably about 50 million, or will be, uh, Lille will be asking for 50 million euros. I'm not sure he is that value yet, but certainly he is on the way up. Uh, how he scores is getting into the uh, box and being found, but he can also dribble and create by himself. Top, top player that I'm convinced he will come to the uh, to the Premier League and he will score as well. He has to shake up a little bit uh, some of the excess dri uh, driving with the ball that he does, uh, the excessive uh, dribbling that he does as well, but uh, he's got such a quick feed. Fantastic player. Keep an eye on him. He will end up in the Premier League, I'm sure. That's it for now. Subscribe if uh, you remember. There will be the second part of the Pep Guardiola interview uh, very soon. And I hope you liked the first one. Uh, it was one of the best pieces of work that I've done. But there are more coming uh, on the way. Uh, other interviews, uh, other little documentaries, things that I hope you would like. But you'll have to subscribe to know about those. And you have to tell people to come and join us as well. So if uh, you think that it's worth to do so, well then do so.